<sighs> it's Half-Life. We're doing it, guys. Half-Life is happening. The reason is, Half-Life is about to be 20 years old. And rather than make a some sort of like just a special episode on the anniversary, which is in November, look forward to it, guys. Uh, I thought I'd just play the whole damn game. Uh, it should be fun. Um, I have not played Half-Life in over a decade. And I remember the really great levels. <laughs> I think I remember every level that comes in the game, so we'll see. We'll see how well my memory serves me. But straight off the bat, I never actually beat this game myself. Um, I got stuck during the infamous final stretch of levels. We'll see if now that I'm a better gamer today, if I can beat them. Um, I, th I think like the first like real, what you could call a boss that shows up in that final stretch of levels, I, I really got stuck on that. A friend, I had to basically play the game for me, that final bit, like he he was over and he played it. And I watched him beat the game. So I, I know how the thing goes, but like that final bit's gonna be a doozy. We'll see, we'll see. I, I wanna believe I can do it. I'm a better, wiser gamer than I was a decade ago, I think. Also, I played, actually, when I played Half-Life, I played the PlayStation 2 port, uh, unlike this one. So with the power of mouse and keyboard, I think I can do this. Before I get started, I know you guys are chomping and I know you're not supposed to have long intros. I want to show you guys just a little bit of the game's age. For one, the fact that the game just pops like this and there is not a single, like, logo. Like, the Valve logo doesn't come on with that... ...music. Like, it just goes into this. First of all, look at this. It's the original Steam... Um, ...like, layout template. That That's a nostalgia bomb. Back, back ten years, if we're honest. Uh, another thing is, I laughed at this. Um... Mouse look is an option, and auto-aim was an option turned on. So, a game in 1998, it still has the option for playing with a joystick. Like, that was built in. Like, the game was designed with the possibility of a joystick. And not just a joystick, but there absolutely is the option for just playing with a keyboard. If you recall, Doom has no keyboard support in its, like original vanilla state like it's uh, uh, no no mouse support what am i talking about i'm sorry it only has keyboard support and half-life despite being so revolutionary in 1998 still kind of owes a lot to that like 90s first person shooter gameplay style including the option to play with full keyboard you can see there's like turn left and there's look up uh, options here, and I believe that's why the auto aim is an option to just help you out a little bit in being able to um, aim at the enemies better. Because unlike Doom, which has hit scanning, you absolutely need to get the cursor on the enemy in this game. Also, how ahead of their time they were. This is really nice that the HEV suit, which for people who haven't played this game, it's like the ambient noise that your like suit makes, like alert noises, and there's actually like a voice that talks over. Kind of like the suit in Crisis, if you guys know that one, which is also like a decade old by now. <laughs> you can choose how loud the HEV suit is. Oh, there's no prompts to hear what it sounds like, though. That's, that's too bad. Also, showing the age of the game a little bit, there is no subtitles in this game. I will do my best to not talk over people in this game. Okay, that's enough of the intro. That was fun, just looking at like, how basic some of this stuff is here. It's, it's really, it really warms, warms the cold cockles of my heart, as they say. I can do medium, I'm fine. And boom, we're in! Good morning, and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train is provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. The time is 8.47 a.m. Oh god, that's almost 9 o'clock! I'm late! The temperature is 93 degrees, with an estimated high of 105. 100 degrees? The compound is maintained at a pleasant 68 degrees. 68? Are we boiling on the surface of Venus? Oh, it's just Fahrenheit. What am I being silly about? Sector C test labs and control facilities. If your intended destination is a high 
So Beyond Sector C. This is all like ambient dialogue we're hearing. It's not super important. This is an incredibly famous sequence, one of the most famous sequences in any video game. And also showing off how this game actually despite its like story emphasis over previous games, there's no cut no uh, cutscenes in this game. Well, no cutscenes technically. Like you could consider this really a cutscene, but like I am not like frozen into a video. I can walk around freely. compound no smoking eating or drinking are permitted within the black mesa transit system please keep your limbs inside the train at all times do not attempt to open the doors until the train has come to a complete halt at the station platform we'll do pacifying the lady voice over the pa passengers are to remain seated and await ooh an army hit chopper Patchy by the looks of it. Cool. So, like, I kind of don't know how to talk about this game because this is one of the most famous games ever, one of the GOATs games of all time. So, like, I feel like everyone knows this game, but then I feel it's still like maybe some of the younger folks watching they know the legends about this game, but they don't know really what it was about. Like, they know about details, or like, they don't know the context, so like, I'm not sure how to talk about, like, like, I want to talk about how revolutionary this was, and on one side, I think people are like, well, duh, everyone knows how, what a big deal Half-Life was. And then I feel like there'll be other people who are like, what's the big deal? It's just a tram ride. Yeah, that's, we are Gordon Freeman. Who, at age 27, has a freaking PhD in theoretical physics. That's impressive. I don't think it's impossible. Certainly not. Um, if you are really, really, really good at science and studying and stuff. But you need to really crank out those theses, I think, if you want to make a PhD by age 27. Especially in theoretical physics. Oh my goodness. Hello, Mr. Robot. Hello. That's weird. Super high-tech robot with like a basic cold wooden plank box. Kind of silly to me. But yeah, like... Load up Doom. Load up like Duke Nukem or Blood or Unreal. And it just puts you right into the game. You have a gun in your hand, you're in the level, you need to start killing enemies. There's nothing to interact with. There's no, like, really plot there. Those games had plots. Doom has a plot, if you read the uh, instruction booklet. But the, the game itself, there was this philosophy that a game was about pure gameplay. You just go in there. That's a snappy suit on that guy. Hello! If you feel you have been exposed to radio How's the weather? Oh yeah, we're in a nuclear silo underground. Never mind. Contact your radiation safety officer immediately. That looks safe. Speaking of radiation safety, that looks safe. Oh. This looks uh arriving at Sector C test labs and control facilities. That's my stop. So like this was like I mean, there were story-heavy games, absolutely. There were seven Final Fantasies by the time this game came out. But, like, first-person shooters were considered to be, like, kind of gameplay first. There was no, like, space for this kind of stuff in it. And I don't know if Half-Life was the first one to do this, but, you know... This was the one that broke it through into the mainstream, like... It, it, if, if someone makes a uh, first-person shooter with no plot these days, it's a throwback to, like, pre-Half-Life games, like a, like a nostalgia, like um, a, a retro-style game. Like, it's, it, it is super rare to have, like, zero kind of intro, zero plot for a first-person shooter. That's a single-player one, anyway, with, like, a single-player campaign in this day and age. Even 2016's Doom, a game I love for its throwbackiness, it totally has a plot, it has cutscenes, and it has, like, 
Half-Life-y style scenes, like kind of like this, where you're walking around and there's a bit of blood going on. You have to wait around for a bit. Not a lot, obviously, because it's freaking Doom. But there is a little bit of that, and that's really funny to think that Doom is homaging Half-Life in this day and age. I mean, not to disparage Doom at all. I love that. I really enjoyed... Well, I, I should give up. I, I, everyone knows I love the 2016 Doom. Oh boy, Doom Eternal. It looks good. Looking forward to it. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Mr. Freeman. I had a bunch of messages for you, but we had a system crash about 20 minutes ago, and I'm still trying to find my files. Just one of those days, I guess. They were having some problems down in the test chamber, too, but I think that's all straightened out. They told me to make sure you headed down there as soon as you got into your hazard suit. Oh, this guy's... Look at this guy shaking his head in disbelief. Oh, no. All of my personalized bookmarks were lost in the server crash. Now I can't find I which... I run that test again. Now I can't find which page of my... Uh, my fanfic I was left reading about Anna Rice novels. Oh, no. Okay, so... And it's funny talking about the plot, like how important the story heaviness of this game was in 1998, because the story by modern standards is really paper thin in this game. There's a couple of plot twists, a couple of really crazy, a couple of like really interesting story beats. 100% sure that theory of yours is correct? Like 1000%. Good, good chat, guys. Do you know who ate all the donuts? Nope. Don't know. Oh. This guy again. Wasn't he on that tram earlier? Oh. Oh, excuse me. I guess it's rude to stare. Coolant reservoir facility. Hey there. Mr. Freeman. You know I can't let you through here. Oh, I forgot my HEV suit. Whoopsie daisy. I'll get back to you in a gif, sir. How's everyone doing in there? Good? Like, this is really rudimentary stuff, but, like, I can't overstate how, like, for FPS players, how, like, uh, new of a experience it was for a lot of people back in the day. Of course, I'm speaking apocryphally in part myself. I did not play this game in 1998. I played this in 2002 when, like, this model was kind of, like, becoming very much the norm by then. But still this game blew me away back then. Or 2003, 2002. I played it on the PlayStation 2, as I mentioned. And, but I was still, like, blown away. This was an incredibly important part of my formative years, this game. I was so obsessed for it. And Half-Life 2 that we were all waiting for. All that said, like, yeah, I can't provide an actual... As I expected. I cannot provide an actual, like, at the moment take on what it was like playing this game back in uh, 1998. I did not play it. I was part of the hype. That's the funny thing. I remember me and my friends, like, in the early internet looking up, like, videos of Half-Life. Like, whoa, look at this game that's coming out. And we didn't care anything about the, like, plot and stuff. It just looked crazy good because this was cutting-edge graphics back in the day. And, like, um, the crazy enemies and amazing, like, looking action. But we're like, oh, my God, this game, it looks amazing. Ah, it's good to see you. Hey, everybody. I'm, I'm actually late for work, so I can't stick around long. Oh, someone's uh, curry pot is here. Hold on. Hold on, I know what to do. I know how to get this to cook up faster. Hold on. We just... Just put the... Come up. There we go. The E button is to use. I went with F. There we go. Just add up a bit of... Crank it up a little bit. Oh, there we go. I missed the prompt. Come on, just add up those uh, Fahrenheit's. My God, what are you doing? Oh, oops, oopsies. So, as much as I'm like lauding Half Life here, being the fanboy I am, let's give credit for games that came before it as well. Um, like Duke Nukem had like things you could interact with earlier, and one of my favorite FPSs, Blood, also has a lot of like funny quotes by interacting with objects. Why do we all I mean, even in Doom, you can like open doors and stuff, obviously, but like just like these kind of little things you can interact with in the environment for shits and giggles. That was something that you know was already in Duke Nukem. Like it is not. It's not that revolutionary, although, like, now, where did I leave that there wasn't a lot of, like, things like K 
cans appearing when you press a button and stuff like that in like Duke Nukem even. Okay, let's hurry the heck up. I'm freaking so late for work. It's funny. Hey guys, I'm looking for my HEV suit. It's uh <laughs> Oh, I'm at full health. Why would I need this health thingy? Who's left a sink full of water? Oh my god. Oh cool, you can interact with this. That's nice. I missed this on my... Okay, okay, so straight up, I... This all looks nominal. I only just got this version of Half-Life because I had Half-Life Source on, on my computer. Uh, well, uh, in my Steam account. Uh, years ago when I got Half-Life 2, the collector's edition, I got Half-Life Source with it. I was going to record with that, but it felt just a little bit wonky and I looked up online that there's some problems with the port of that game. It's a source port just to the source engine that... The Valve made to like test out transferring, um, uh, tr tr like making mods with the Source Engine. So they modded Half Life to work on the Source Engine. It's a bit janky, and honestly, uh, let's go for the like maximum old school 98 experience, which I haven't actually really had myself. So we're doing it right now. Oh, and there it is, my HEV suit. So I mentioned that while this is so innovative, it also has a lot of stuff that it, it still has signs of being an old 90s uh, first-person shooter compared to more modern games. Here's one. Check out me suiting up in the HEV. Blip! It's just a pick upable item, like... Well, we get cool music. That's a nice feature. We get the science-y music. I love this beat. Um, oh yeah, that's the HEV suits. Nice computer telling that it's working optimally. Um, basically, so yeah, uh, I just wanted to point out that we just walked over it and we just put it on automatically like a power-up, which is a very old school thing. I mean, you still pick up ammo in games like that and like health and stuff in a lot of games. The ones that don't have re regenerating health anyway. But like a moment like that in a modern game, absolutely you'd get like some kind of like small cutscene of you like picking up the suit and like suiting up into it. If nothing else, just your hands appearing and like pulling the suit towards you and slipping into it. Whereas... Whereas, you know, in this game, again, it's just a pick up a bull, like, power-up. No, 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 no shade to throw at the game, but it's fun to see, like, it's fun, like, this is a retrospective, because it's an anniversary episode. It is fun to see, like, how this game is really old, and how, like, that innovative stuff, like, how it shows through in this game. Go right on through, sir. Looks like you're in the barrel today. Okie dokie. Freeman. Oh, right, this is the way I went. I was going the completely wrong way the first time. Oh, well, it's fine. Oh, thank you. Now we got a little loading screen. Oh, I should probably quick save in a while. It's not like, not like we're in any danger. We just go over and do our job. It's a, just another average day at Black Mesa Institute. Dr. Johnson, please call thank you. Oh, it's a little hard to tell the buttons in this game. One other thing about modern games, there'd totally be like some sort of light effect or something to make this button stick out so you know that you're supposed to interact with it. This is a very plain texture. But it works. So apart from just story, this game was all about immersion. Like, it's not an immersive sim per se, like Deus Ex, but like... The idea of immersion is still really important in this game, so I think that's more than a story, really, in my mind, is this is supposed to feel like a realistic, actual, like, environment. Yeah, pardon? Hello. I'm... Freeman? Hello. Good to, see you. good to see you, too. I mean, okay, honestly, there's a lot of areas, because it's a... It's a futuristic, um... Uh, science facility, so there's a lot of things that don't necessarily make a lot of sense to a layman, like, I don't know what the heck this is. But it's supposed to be like a functioning place. Like, co compare again to Doom levels, where... Like, I think Doom 2 is a great example, because um, that has, like, levels based on, like, a city on Earth. 
and and you can see the effort there. There's like textures for buildings, and they're shaped like buildings. The places you go to, but you could never believe that a person would actually live in those places. They're just like gameplay prop levels to fight enemies. No shade on Doom, but like that's the point. Like that's the idea is that those aren't like really like they're only a simulacrum of a of a of an actual believable environment. This one we've seen a locker room, we've seen a break room, we've seen security checkpoints. We've seen the kind of stuff you'd expect in a science facility. There's lasers here, just like in any good science institute will have. You can go to CERN and if they don't have lasers there, you can be like, "Hey, what is this? You've kidnapped me and taken me to some sort of fake Truman show-esque facsimile of CERN. Where are the lasers?" Trust me on that. that. You go to CERN, you'll see lasers there. I don't know where I'm going with this point. <laughs> but yeah, um, so more than, again, more than a story, which again is really, honestly, is very thin in this game. Robust for its time, but really thin in hindsight, I feel. It's more about immersion. Like, again, and the plot reveals itself in very immersive ways. It's a lot about paying attention to stuff. To pick up on the plot. Well, I'll talk more about as we notice stuff in this world. Um, Half-Life 2 is way more about that. Because Half-Life 2, there's like the whole mystery of what happened in the world. And no one really bothers to explain to Freeman. Everyone assumes that Freeman knows what's going on in the world in Half-Life 2. But um, this one, the plot is so simple. So there's not a whole lot to pick up on. I'll point it out, of course. Ah, Gordon. There you are. We just sent the sample down to the test chamber. We've boosted the anti-mass spectrometer to 105%. Bit of a gamble, but we need the extra resolution. The administrator is very concerned that we get a conclusive analysis of today's sample. I gather they went to some lengths to get... Oh yeah, no problem. I'll take care of it. They're waiting for you, Gordon. In the test chamber. Okay, jeez, don't, uh... Don't, don't, don't get so stuffy with me. <laughs> Come on, man. They're waiting for you, Gordon. This looks interesting. High-powered plasma, I assume? What the? Um... What the hell is going on with our equipment? It was meant to be this in the first place. <laughs> Can I just say, they are doing super, like, advanced, like, like... I guess quantum level like experiments in this place like and this like are super important with a risky material then the, everything's riding on this test if something like this happened where a goddamn goddamn computer malfunctioned like this I think they would in real life call off the experiment they'd be like okay there's something there's a problem with the systems we need to call off the experiment uh, everyone take the day off we'll meet you next morning while we fix this up like honestly this seems like they would not let this this would not pass muster I, I don't think this is this is something that they'd allow to happen and then could proceed with the experiment hell that whole server crash thing that Barney was talking about I think that might be grounds for calling off the experiment I mean maybe foreign powers are spying on you and cost the servers to go down who knows? Hey guys! I'm afraid we'll be deviating a bit from standard analysis procedures today, Gordon. Yes, but with good reason. This is a rare opportunity for us. This is the purest sample we've seen yet. And, potentially, the most unstable. Now, now, if you follow standard insertion procedures, everything will be fine. I don't know how you can say that, although I will admit that the possibility of a resonance cascade scenario is extremely unlikely. Gordon doesn't need to hear all this. He's a highly trained professional. Yeah, I know what those words you said were. ...that nothing will go wrong. Ah, yes, you're right. Gordon, we have complete confidence in you. Well, go ahead. Let's let him in now. Uh, th thanks, guys. Um... Okay. I guess I'll do the experiment. You didn't sound... Hmm. Again, this sounds really shady, some of this stuff they're talking about. Seems, again, grounds for calling off an experiment of this caliber. Not that I have any damn idea what we're doing here. Ugh. Testing. Testing. Seems to be in order. All right, Gordon, your 
suit should keep you comfortable through all this. The specimen will be delivered to you in a few moments. If you would be so good as to climb up and start the rotors, we can bring the anti-mass spectrometer to 80% and hold it there until the carrier arrives. Way ahead of you, I'm already up here on the catwalk, so I will just turn on your crazy reactor machine. Look at this. You know, I just remembered another game before Half-Life, which actually does have an opening with, like, no action in it. That's just like a build-up of atmospheric. Just to show that, yes, I am aware that there are games which did this before Half-Life, even though Half-Life brought it to the Vogue. The Aliens mod for Doom, which came out in 1994, I believe. 1995, actually, because it was a Doom 2 mod. The first level has no enemies in it because it's supposed to be atmospheric. You're landing on an alien planet and you're like traversing. Ow! Oopsies. I forgot how hard it's to climb ladders in this game. Um, that that mod I will do it, sir. So yeah, that just I just just remembered the aliens mod to Half Life, uh, Half Life to, to Doom Two does something like this. So that was really clever of the aliens mod guys to be so ahead of their time with that. Really? Except. Man, I, I freaking Gordon wrote a glori uh, glor Gordon wrote a freaking PhD, and now he's just a glorified like sample pusher guy. Fine, I'll push your damn sample, man. man. I didn't spend all that tuition in freaking Oxford for this. Let's just say schlop. Okay, fine, I'll schlop it. Uh. What? Oh, oh god. Oh jeez. Let me out! Oh my god! Those people are dead! Let me out of here! I will want to die! Let me out! Help! Oh my god! Uh, oh! Is this... Death? Or... Uh. Mm. I'm still alive! Help! What? Uh. Um... Friend or foe? Uh... Uh! Oh goodness! Um, hi, hi the guys, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. Uh, oh dear, oh, oh no. Unforeseen consequences. Who could have seen this coming? Oh, my head. Oh, God. Bricks. That doesn't look very good at all. Oh, jeez. Oh, my goodness. I was almost crushed by this rubble. Oh, my God. This man's about to die. Where? Where's the... Where's the paramedics? Where's the EMTs? What is this? Oh, my... Well, he died with a smile on his face, I guess, so... Great. Let me through! I need to get help down here, this man's dying! Oh. Well, this is ironic, this guy's right here. Helping. Oh, he's he's gonna make it. Uh, okay. Oh, oh man, oh man, oh man. Okay, you just stand there for a bit, I will try and find some help for you. Oh, I picked up health, that's nice, because I lost a little bit when I fell. <laughs> just stay there, I'm gonna go find some- Wow! He'll probably live through that. Maybe? Yeah, okay, okay. Anyway, I'll, I will find help. I gotta get topside. Someone's gonna be able to help you out. Is this... Oh, thank goodness. One of the, one of the doors works. What the... Whoa! You're a feisty... What are you? Ooh, some sort of... Cephaloid crustacean. Weird. Hey guys. Why didn't they listen? 
We try to warn them. I never thought I'd see a resonance cascade, let alone create one. Gordon, you're alive. Thank you, God, for that hazard suit. I'm afraid to move him and all our phones are out. Please, get to the surface as soon as you can and let someone know we're stranded down here. You'll need me to activate the retinal scanners. I'm sure the rest of the science team will gladly help you. That's that's right. So when we talk to a character, you won't even know I'm here. they will follow you. If you talk to them again, been that much of a bird? they'll just stop. Stop this. You can like stop and go a character to follow you. Um, so we need him to activate the retinal scanner. This, this scanner. There's a tutorial for the interacting with the NPCs of the game, basically. How 